Hello guys, welcome back to PGL Tavern Tales. Uh, before we start with the next match, let's explain what happened during the previous match, so Hoi versus Stan Sivka. Since the match ended 3-2 for Hoi, but post factum, uh, the admins kind of recognized there was a problem with the Shaman list, which had Trogs instead of another card. Uh, there was a decision made based on, well, on this mistake from both sides, from the players and from the Madness, not recognizing this from earlier, that the game loss is awarded uh, for Hoi. Since the match was already, um, well, end, uh, did end 3-2, the game loss changes uh, the result to 2-3 for Stan Sivka, and that makes Stan Sivka go through the bracket. And that's basically the result of this mistake, almost a mistake, from Howie. Anyway, let's advance to the next match. We'll be uh, casting with me Nimsh and Ikop, and this will be the match between JJ and Stansivka. So, yep. guys, what do you can tell me about JJ? Well, um, JJ is a powerhouse, and uh, this year he was really on fire. And uh, I still remember JJ when he just um, got to one of the first Seed Story Cups. I, I think it was second Seed Story Cup. He was just starting the stream. He didn't have that many viewers. He just wanted to hang out with people. And mm -hmm. then from that point, he started playing tournaments. He started being very competitive, and now he is here in the, in the top. Is it top three at the moment? Top three, I believe. Yeah, there's only three yep, players. It is top three. Um, the winner of the next match goes to the grand final, but with one downside coming from the lower bracket. Ikup can tell us. Yeah, of course. Um, since it was a double elimination bracket, uh, naturally the, go, uh, the guy going through to, through to the game, grand finals mm -hmm. from the winner's bracket um, still has his um, extra life. Yeah, right? exactly. So um, basically once uh, the loser's finals are played out and the winner from that is determined to uh, determine the grand finals, the guy coming from the loser's bracket has to win not one, but two series. Just in to be fair to, the to the other guy that didn't lose a game, yeah. as uh, I mean, a match in the entire tournament, right? And there is a very fun fact because in the grand final there is already a, a man waiting. That's mm -hmm. Tessin, and JJ lost to Tessin two times already. He knocked him out in the groups, and okay. then he knocked him out in the, in the upper bracket. Which means if JJ goes to the final, he will have to play versus the guy he never won before. Well, that kind of changes a lot, right? But. Let's talk about the bans. Uh, here we are, ban phase is on, two druids are being banned in the first wave and two warriors are being picked. And now I don't see anything well, else. Well, I know, <laughs> I, I remember what happened because I, I talked to the guys. So Super JJ and mm -hmm. Stan Sivka are uh, played as partners and they are playing together. So they have exactly the same list, card to card. Okay. They, they submitted uh, all the same nine decks. So they start with the druid ban, then pi they pick warrior, then uh, they ban some stuff, they pick Huzu, and then the last pick is, I believe, um, was it actually Rogue? I'm not sure. Do, do you remember, Ikab? What was the <laughs> No, I don't. Yeah, but like basically <laughs> they will have mirror, the mirror, mirror matches so overall. So it's exactly a mirror match unless someone uh, got a different ban, got a different pick, right? Because they literally play the same card. They pick the same things, yes. So it's Dragon it's Warriors, yep. Zeus, and Rogues for them. Exactly the same bans as well. The strategy was pretty clear for both guys. Exactly. And um, Ikop, um, are you familiar with the new version of Zoo with the discard implemented into it? Yeah, definitely. I've played it a lot and to great success as well. Uh, so mm. yeah. Great success! Not, not, not going <laughs> to brag, but uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a very powerful deck. Um, it's a it's nice, um, different type of Zoo to play if you're bored of the, all the other uh, versions that came before it. Um, people always wanted to make the discard strategy work, and now with Silver Egg Golem and um, yeah, also the Mahal are simple, especially. It's just such a a sweet strategy to perform and you get so much advantage out of the Malhazars Imp, especially uh, if you're able to combine it with uh, those discard cards. Yeah, okay. But you're, um, you're favoring the version that is like less YOLO, you know, with, with the console man, with the Imp Gang bosses, or the more YOLO version with more charge minions and just straight oh, out damage? Mean. Yeah, it's... Um, it's a little bit different. Uh, I think that actually the previous version um, of Zoo, like without this card, was uh, even more YOLO because you had like Leroy's uh, sometimes and mm -hmm. Powerful Wimings. Mm -hmm. Powerful Wimings are not even good in that kind of list anymore, so people are cutting it uh, okay. completely from the deck. And uh, yeah, but it uh, works yeah. out. It works out perfectly, and uh, you just get so much good advantage with the discard synergies. I will actually see uh, the zoo for the first game. It's Warlock versus Rogue. Um, Edwin van Kleef double backstab in an opening hand. That's kind of nuts, right? It is very good, and not only that. Overall, the fact that he is running Rogue into the zoo, I think, uh, gives Stan a quite advantage here because uh, with the same deck, same mirrors, you have to win the mind games and to queue a better deck versus mm -hmm. like to get mm -hmm. a good matchup. And I believe Rogue uh, has a slight advantage versus Zoo 
Uh, Iko, do you agree with that, or did something change with Anyway, the guys, I'll just leave you to it. Yeah. Cast the game. <laughs> so, so much, Nims and Ikub, take it away. So, yeah, uh, not only does Sansivka uh, have the um, mind game advantage right here with the better pick um, into so Super JJ's zoo, uh, even though both players picked and banned in the same order, pretty much, <laughs> the same decks and uh, the same classes. Um, yes, yeah, Stansivka has the better matchup right now in the first uh, matchup here. And also, I would say Stansivka has the advantage when it comes to um, emotions, I would say, right? Because Stansivka comes off the uh, back of uh, um, yeah, a, a little bit tarnished win, but uh, still a win, right? Yeah. And um, Super JJ did lose to Tessin before that. And uh, after the series against Tessin, JJ was uh, super upset and salty about, uh, about the ho uh, whole how the whole thing went down with the Tuscar Totemix. And uh, this might also affect him um, a little bit still in this series. Yeah, I do agree with you. Uh, the only thing that Stansivka is missing is the coin. If he would have the coin right here, that would be so good overall. But uh, yeah, still backstab and Edwin is, is pretty much fine. I think Swamp was not doing that much. Overall, what do you think about uh, Jage's hand, the opening hand? It, it looks good. Yeah, it um, does in fact look good. It's not like just because you queue into a rogue with a zoo, it uh, doesn't give you an automatic loss, right? As long as you are able to apply a lot of pressure, and if you have those huge power turns with uh, Silver Roy Golem especially, then um, and the rogue is, has trouble dealing with it. And the rogue, sure, can have trouble dealing with it, for sure. Uh, there's no good AoE uh, anymore since the nerf of Blade Flurry. There's the only thing that's... Um, Resembling any AoE in Stansivka's list is, of course, the fan of Nefs with the spell damage. Oh man, I really like the, the Blood Imp here because he is playing around the backstab and uh, he's actually playing around double backstab and uh, weapon attack there a bit, but still, I think you. you can, can you go for Edwin here overall? Or do you just SI? SI was a nice card to get. You could have gone for Edwin, but at the same time, um, enabling the SI here is uh, pretty good too. Uh, you will have um, an Edwin of the same size pretty much this in the next turn as well if you combine it with the Conceal. So, uh, yeah, I, I like going for the Edwin next turn as well. Okay. So now we do have a couple of options. Mm. Soulfire with the inclusion from Doomguard might not be that good, but still you kind of want to get rid of the free free and with the Imp you are able to draw a card off the, off the top. Yeah, you of might the even card. be able to draw into a one drop here. That would be great. <laughs> oh, oh, he discarded a wolf, got a wolf back. Still, this uh, Malkazar's Imp is quite nice. Makes those cards like Soulfire, Doomguard, much better. Yeah, that is uh, that is something that's uh, yeah been pretty much uh, the theme of Warlock the whole time and uh, since the inception of Hearthstone. You had have those cards that are really powerful, but they come at the price. You have to discard cards as an additional cost, and discarding cards uh, so they do nothing is is card disadvantage, right? But Malchazar's Imp having that on the board not only does it provide a good uh, stated minion for one mana, but uh, also yeah, it completely negates the disadvantage that those discard cards have. I'm just laughing because this is like this blood imp did so much work, just forced forced stun to eviscerate the Voidwalker. Voidwalker getting plus two extra health backstab was not really useful there. But uh, the fact is that now the imp Don't does worry, not do that much. Or it might actually, if it buffs the 2 1 into Look, the 2 2. This is such a sick turn the, with the second Malhazar's imp being picked up by Super JJ right on the time when he wants to play Doom Doomguard on turn 5. And <laughs> Stansivka not having the opportunity to deal with this imp unless he subs it. Yeah, so sub and then play an Edwin doesn't feel great, but it's still a 4 4 on board. And there is nothing else, so if he just does nothing this turn, it just. What attacks? I'm pretty sure. Face I'm weapon. pretty sure Stansivka uh, might hold on to his resources here, actually, because uh, you don't you don't feel good about sapping a one drop. Uh, there's definitely going to be better targets for the sap later on. Sure, it stinks a lot when there's a uh, Doomguard involved. However, um, so yeah, you might as well sap a Doomguard later on. But although, then again, yeah, he's just going to draw more cards with the Doomguard as well. He's not going to yeah. ever have a drawback from it uh, because the Malhazus Imp will remain yeah. on the board. So yeah. I'll For I'll me, MVP of this game is Blood Imp. Yeah, oh def you definitely. You can't kill the two one. Definitely, it's uh, it's so deceptive, right? Um, usually, you would say, uh, oh, it doesn't matter because uh, it just dies to the fan and uh, then gave like one health only. But there is, if there is no fan for a long for a longer period of time, then the Blood Imp. Uh, over time, it will just have a significant impact. It did help a lot with the backstabs and now against the weapon as well. So uh, JJ has to decide what to do with this uh, Edwin, or do you want to 
do anything. You know stun only has one card in hand. It shouldn't be that dangerous. So instead of just uh, trying to go for Darwuf Alpha and like maybe some, some other things and trading into this Edwin or maybe just playing so the Doomguard, discarding some cards, he went for the life tap and now I believe there will be a way to just Ignore the Edwin and, and go face instead. Of I don't. I don't it. mind. I don't mind killing off the Edwin here. Um, getting rid of all the minions that the rogue can have on the board is always nice. And uh, then also after that, um, the Void Walker does protect um, the Direwolf Alpha from oncoming attacks. So yeah, I, I definitely like killing off the Edwin here. Otherwise, the Edwin just one shots, um, one shots the Void the Walker, Walker yeah. and uh, yeah, your other stuff might be vulnerable again. Well, Shadow Strike is going to kill Halpa Minion, but this is not the best deal in the world that Stunsifka yeah. is getting. He Stun needs to draw these gadgets and next yeah. turn. Yeah, are doing a really good job, as the Rogue usually does, uh, with dealing uh, with the Zeus minions. However, uh, yeah, unless he draws those card draws, he will never be able to um, basically swing back the advantage in his favor. And now we see the Malkazar's Imp Beauty with the second Doomguard being drawn off the top. So this is a huge impact on yeah, the board right now. Yeah, this is so insane. Oh man, we <laughs> oh, we, so we didn't we didn't just <laughs> I, I didn't just talk about like the um, Imp negating the advantage. What it also does is it digs you digs you deeper into your deck if you draw additional cards with it. And uh, yeah, it digs you deeper for the Doomguard or the Argent Horse Rider and the Soul Fires and all the kind of burst like. Just discarding cards, drawing cards, and then getting more discard cards off of off top of your deck to draw more cards. Yeah. Soul Fire, for it example. It just cycles yeah, through your deck, which is great. And it works with so many cards right now because you have double Doomguard, double Soul Fire, double Librarian, I believe. So a lot of cards are actually discard. And Librarian on top of it not only doesn't have the disadvantage now because it discard and draws guard, you can get the Golem as well. So um, that matchup was supposed to be good for Stun, but he lost it, and now he's queuing. JJ has to stay on that zoo list because this is last hero standing, and Stun is taking his Warrior. And uh, Warrior versus Zoo, uh, most likely I would say Warrior has a slight advantage, but uh, in this new build it might be, might be tricky. What I'm also noticing, uh, I didn't even touch on that before, but what, what I'm also noticing right now is that the pairs are playing incredibly fast, as we can see, as <laughs> like they're in the hurry or something. And, uh, Play it as partners. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's because they don't mind two wins here, uh, since they both, uh, like they both, uh, yeah, they're, they're friends, they prepared uh, they, uh, together, they play the same decks, and maybe in that case they uh, don't mind if the other loses to the other. Uh, but also, maybe it's because of, the, of them wanting to preserve energy for um, the upcoming grand finals, which, where they have to focus completely on it, right? Like this, they they have, if they if they think longer for the turns, they're going to fatigue themselves eventually. This is uh, not a sprint; this is a marathon that they are doing here. So, um, if they plan on winning the tournament, they have to preserve energy. So, I like the fast play style. Yeah, I think you might be up to something there with the fast play style. But uh, overall, if I recall our games, like when we play tested together in Doggy House and we played against each other, you just instinctively play fast because you, you, you play this so much with your friend that uh, you've been there. Like they've been playing those matchups before. So they just play on autopilot in a way as well. Uh, no good target for Blood to Acre here, unfortunately, for for Stan. And uh, JJ actually having a, a pretty nice curve. He will be able to deal with the three two without any problems. Looking in the next turn for Stan Sivka, he has the fireworks, he has the dragon. Onyxia. Oh, there's imp being picked up. <laughs> yeah, another imp. But uh, might not be the best pick. With Coil, I think you can just attack into it in Coil, so that's pretty good. Yeah, the Coil is nice too. Um, gets you closer to the Doom Guards that you actually want. Those are the most important cards, of course. Uh, they deal the most amount of pressure, and uh, yeah, if your opponent does not have Execute, then you're in a very good spot to win this uh, game very quickly. And this is a big card in this matchup as well. Like right now, people mostly play one off, but with Blood Taker and Ghoul, you can almost clear this board fully yeah. and uh, develop board of your own. This Ghoul was a huge pickup for Sansivka. That is exactly what you, the card that you need against uh, <laughs> th those aggressive warlocks generally. Just able to clear so many minions at the same time. And it's so funny like how this matchup changed actually, because before every Dragon Warrior was playing two Ghouls. Right now you play mostly one because you play Fierce Monkey with the Curator. But uh, Zoo doesn't play Ritual anymore yeah. at least this build. So Ghoul is even even so, Ghoul is still very good against Zoo. The yeah. pr the only problem is uh, that I mean the reason why people have been cutting um, uh, one or even two Ghouls from those Dragon Warriors list um, 
is basically because uh, the meta has shifted. Yeah, not only uh, is Zul less popular, and and doesn't play ritual. Also, yeah. like uh, there's a lot of Maligos through it going on, uh, so you don't really need it against teachers anymore. And uh, yeah, just, just the meta has uh, shifted. So. Cut, cutting ghoul as crazy as it seems is actually the right call. Yeah, in this meta game at least makes sense. Um, here probably Flamin being the biggest minion that you can play this turn instead of Malchazar's. Yeah, yeah. And Malchazar's imp, despite it not being picked up from the peddler, he uh, drew his the one obviously that he had in his deck as well, which is well, of course nice on the following turn with the Doom Guard, perfect mana for it as well. But still, Stan Sivka is in a good position here, just taking the board away, still having 25 health, and uh, this Onyxia is getting. Closer and closer, and Ixia originally being a really good card versus Zul because with so many minions you can't do much, you probably will have to ignore it and go face. So we'll see if this Doom Guard is enough yeah. to... Yeah, this, this double discard on the Argus is bittersweet, right? It, it's good because they are clunky minions that you might not have the resources to uh, play f uh, anyway, but um, they are so good against warriors in general because warriors, uh, especially when they have a mage hero power, have so many things that deal one damage. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you kind of want to buff those one health minions uh, with the Argus. Certainly. Oh man, that execute was really good. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if, um, if JJ goes for the Imp Gangboss and then discards the Ooze because... Um, to cycle it? Yeah, I, I mean, the, sure, the, uh, the Ooze is important against Fire Warx, but if there was a Fire Warx, he would have probably had it already. And uh, you don't really want to play around top deck Fire Warx, I feel like. So I feel like actually going for the Imp Gangboss and just playing Soulfire to get a better card well, he decided that he wants to see what he draws, and even if he discards the Imp boss, he's fine with playing the Librarian and Acidic Swamp Lose on that turn. Basically just still cycling through his deck, trying to get um, the second Doom Guard maybe, get more cards overall. Yeah, it looks like he wants to keep this um, Acidic Swamp Lose around in case there will be a weapon, but... Uh, but this yeah. really favors Stansivka. Definitely. Stansivka is still healthy, still in a good spot, and next turn he plays on Nixia. Yeah, he won't even need to have a weapon in order to get advantage after he plays those big dragons. Onyxia is definitely going to look forward to close out this game. JJ only at 16 health and facing down a board of, what, 14 attack? Yeah, <laughs> even, <laughs> even, thi alone. even this turn you can, you can play Fairy Dragon as well. So if you kill the 2-4, play Fairy Dragon, those two imps are going to kill the dragon, but uh, they need to do, s do s uh, something with a 4-1 after the attack. So JJ in a really bad position this time. Uh, Stansivka needs to decide which one would uh, he like to kill. Is there any reason to go to face? Probably not. You still win with an XS and want to go for board. Yeah, exactly. Like There's absolutely nothing that JJ can do except for finishing Stansivka off um, to play around Onyxia, right? So yeah. as long as uh, Stansivka deals with all the minions, there can never be any amount of like, surprise burst that finishes you off. Oh, he misses. He wanted it to dagger the 4 1 if possible. He's still going for it. Let's see if he hits it. Doesn't uh, get it. Doesn't get it, which means he's losing part of the board and he would love to have more board. Yeah, also and, and that placement of the. <laughs> of the uh, Dire Wolf now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, but at least he has the Knife Juggler and now also a Doom Guard. He can play Doom Guard, tap into something, get one more knife. Flame Mip doesn't seem good. <laughs> Yeah, now because he tapped, uh, he also got into range of lethal here. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, one yeah. one. Sansivka tying it up with the Dragon Warrior. It was expected that he wins against Zoo with the Warrior. Warrior, of course, having a pretty decent matchup against Zoo generally. Um, but yeah, so did the Rogue, and JJ managed to take that game as well. So um, yeah, uh, JJ definitely happy with how his Zoo deck performed. Um, Overall, in this series, I would say, like taking an unexpected win in the first game. Yeah. Now falling down to the Dragon Warrior, and now we have to see what JJ is going to pick into the Dragon Warrior. Yeah, that's the tricky one because he has a Dragon Warrior still, but the mirror match is a 50 50. If you lose Dragon Warrior, Dragon Warrior, you, you put yourself in a bad yeah. spot. Is Can he take the Rogue instead? How yeah. is Rogue versus Dragon Warrior? Well, I'm pretty sure JJ is going to give us the answer to that. And yeah, it seems like what? he does consider the Rogue to have a better matchup against, uh, against the Warrior. Or, if, or even if the matchup is the same, I guess he uh, picks it and then in case he loses, he's still going to have the warrior against uh, the zoo, which uh, probably has a better matchup against the zoo than uh, the rogue would have. Yeah, probably. Um, maybe they even have like similar matchups. Like, I, I 
know a lot of players, they don't like mirror matches because they feel like mirror matches is just a coin flip. So whoever draws better wins, uh, which is not entirely true. Uh, it's like, uh, there's a lot of skill involved in most of the mirror matches, but Dragon Warrior mirror matches are really early game dependent. So instead of going for a coin flip, you might as well go for um, a rogue match where maybe you will have a chance to, to, to have more like decision decisions overall. Yeah, and of course the Rogue um, does have the Aesthetics Wombos available to it, so um, that might come into effect. Uh, although right now, yeah, we, do, we don't see the Warrex and so JJ does not have a good target for the SI7 here. So we might actually just see uh, an Aesthetics Wombos just to threaten a kill on the minion here. But uh, yeah, we see uh, JJ does hold off on it. Um, Besides because uh, because it would have just fell uh, it would have just fallen victim to hero power and Mer and the tiny uh, not tiny thing, the Mergleton, certainly Mergleton alone. Yeah, that's true. But this means he is really passive, and the uh, stunsive call of the yeah. Frothing Berserker builds up a really nice board. There is, I believe, no answer to this Frothing Berserker from the hand. Yeah, JJ with all the cards he does not need. He does <laughs> instead of eviscerates, he does hold cold blood. Instead of deadly poison, he does hold conceal. It's <laughs> yeah, it's. All the wrong cards in the right mana slots. So if you you can't deal with the Frothing Berserker, you can, in theory, deal with the free free, but it's not really good because you look have to coin <laughs> look for at nothing. This play. Look at J look at this play. JJ is shaking his head in disbelief. Like I can't believe I'm doing this. I have to do this play, right? But yeah, he has to because he will be able to call blood the Falnos and then start yeah. trading into minions. Not only that, he could also pick up. Um, Backstab or fan of yeah, knives. Yeah, ba backstab or fan of knives, which might do some work with the uh, blood mage Thalnos. and uh, yeah, overall <laughs> a, ver a very, a very, a very awkward play, but probably the, the, um, best the one, one that gives JJ the highest odds of uh, coming back into this game. And now Stansivka is like, okay, there is this Thalnos on the board, and if he has fan of knives preparation, fan of knives, that is going to hurt. So how they play uh, to the best of my ability here. This might be <laughs> this is actually a funny situation. Like yeah. from Stan's perspective, do you do you see a tr a trick from JJ's pers uh, from JJ a trap? Like you can you can be happy with the board you have right now. Oh, he's going for the guardian just yeah, he goes to six. Yeah, basically just uh, wants to have a beefy minion to not get completely demolished by AOE. And so double fan of knives yeah. was a consideration from Stan Sivka. He well, I mean double fan of knives not really, but like with the preparation it was possible, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, like, if you, if you don't think about double fun of knives, you might get, you might play another frauding and play another blood mm -hmm. to Ikor and be like, sure, this board is so good, you're mm -hmm. never going to destroy it. So he w he he asked actually playing around double fun of knives with this play, because this is not like the best yeah. play. I feel you are throwing away the dragon. This is not getting buffed. The the uh, Alexstrasza champion is losing charge because you've played the dragon. But yeah, having this yeah, it's, hav it's having this large variety of mm. minions stat wise, right? Yeah. It it um, doesn't make you vulnerable to anything. But there's no double fun of knives. There is nothing Tomb Pillager is not saving his day here. Just going yeah. for the sap in the SA7. This guy's toast. Sap is a pretty good uh, play on this Frothing Berserker now. Uh, Stan Sipka will not be happy to have to replay this for three mana, considering he also has another Frothing in hand. But uh, yeah, Stan Sipka definitely still in a very dominant position here. The Rogue <laughs> already at 16 health. I'm just laughing because JJ had such a bad hand that he ma had to make like an awkward play which made Stansivka kind of like make a suboptimal play as well. But still, Stansivka is in a good position this match. Because this is overall, I feel, a good matchup for Warrior, just go face. And, um, well actually I talked about it with Sixo. Sixo thought that this build with Questing Adventures can be good versus Warrior overall, so he gives slight advantage to Rogue. I still feel like War Warrior is super, super stable overall. Yeah, definitely. I mean, J it, JJ also, obviously, as we have seen, did not really draw the right answers. He he didn't draw eviscerates. He didn't draw backstabs. This and is over, yeah, right? Like you can't even fan of knives that because you you just buff frothing oh, berserker, so you can fan to draw a card. But is there anything you can like? You need to eviscerate, yeah, I guess. I'm pretty sure he's just gonna double cold blood the uh, frothing and attack it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, JJ does not give uh, Stansivka any tells about what he has in his hand to uh, figure out his playstyle, maybe. But it uh, doesn't really matter because JJ's rogue is eliminated. And um, yeah, we're uh, going to have a mirror match. That, so the last deck for JJ is the Dragon Warrior. 
and it's absolutely possible for the for the reverse sweep now because if JJ wins the mirror match versus the dragon, uh, Rogue is already eliminated, and then he ends up with the dragon warrior versus the zoo, which um, favors dragon warrior. So it it all comes to this one game, I think. Yeah, this but is pretty much. Um yeah, the, the game the game will be decided here most likely. I mean, of course, Sansivka always has the opportunity to beat the Dragon Warrior, but it's going to be a tough task. Oh man, that's bad. I mean, Fire Dragon is fine, but you don't want to have Onyxia on the opening hand. What you want to have on the opening hand is Alex Ross Champion, is Fire War X. Wow, and Fierce Monkey is not bad, Frothing Berserker is not bad. So JJ, I think, has some... Um, he's alright with getting that Frothing, but Stun has a better hand here. Yeah, definitely. I'm JJ definitely not happy about seeing this Onyxia and the Execute either, I, I suppose. It's just so awkward and uh, situational. I mean, obviously, Onyxia is uh, a dead card until turn 9, and Execute is pretty situational. It doesn't provide anything to the curve, really. So, uh, yeah, and with the Fairy, Dra Fairy Dragon also just not being the optimal turn 2 play, <laughs> you would rather have Alex Rada's Champion of Fireworks, of course. I like the play from Stansivka to start with the weapon instead of starting with the champion. Because if the if JJ has a weapon, he just kills the champion, and then next turn Stansivka has to play a weapon anyway. And if JJ has a minion, it, he either plays a minion and loses it to the weapon, or he just has to armor up. Yeah, it's it's also that um, he wanted to prevent, although. I think you can execute here, by the way. Yeah, he wanted to prevent. Um, he want, didn't want to coin out Alex Straza's champion because he also wanted to prevent um, JJ from having only Alex Strauss champion as a solution against the Alex Strauss champion. So he would rather no. have JJ play the Alex Strauss champion, but he definitely probably wouldn't have played it into the works. Yeah, it's, it's, a l it's definitely a good preemptive play, though, the fireworks, yeah. for sure. I like it a lot. So, so this turn you can do uh, a couple of things. You can attack with the minion into two forward and kill the two, uh, kill the four four with the weapon and play the monkey, uh, or oh, just ignore it as well. Uh, you could, I think, also execute. So like attack with the weapon into it, execute it, play another champion, go six to face, because you have a second execute for the three six, and the three six is probably the most annoying target that you're going to see. But overall, executes in this matchup are good because there are not only Twilight Guardians but also. Crushers, Corruptors, like there's a lot of big targets you, you kind of want to execute. Yeah, we see right here JJ wants to um, be the aggressor here. And um, sure, this this kind of play also um, gets punished by like a Corcoran lead, I guess. A Cor if Corcoran lead were to run into a Fierce Monkey, then uh, Frothing would get like a free trade on the 3-3. Three, three. But I guess JJ does not mind that uh, because he, he has to use those executes somehow, right? He has to execute, so he, I guess he wouldn't mind actually even executing um, a Frothing if that uh, was necessary. I would not mind executing Frothing here because with the Corruptor next turn, you get a really good advantage on board overall. You haven't seen cool yet, so I kind of like attacking, executing, playing the champion, going six to face, having a nice board, and he plays a five drop, uh, which is probably yeah. Azure Drake, which is Corruptor, weapon up. It is definitely a very strong aggressive start here by JJ now. The putting the executes to good use, however, because the executes went down on those uh, smaller minions, he's never going to have anything um, to handle those bigger ones, right? That's he's not going to have anything against having that opening. But yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's I fine. It's fine. It's a mirror match, and they play the same deck. So <laughs> sometimes I'm, I'm getting confused. Then. <laughs> yeah. Well, Stansif loves bananas, and he had the monkey on board. So. But yeah, the situation is basically the same, but just the players reversed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is so over with the Crusher as the follow-up as well. So it's uh, right now, right here, you can get. Uh, JJ2 below 15, which means the Crusher is 9-9. Nine nine. And from JJ's perspective, you probably want to execute this turn just to get something. I don't see a, a good way to come back yeah. from this position. It's like the positive thing about using executes on smaller mains. Sure, you don't have them for the bigger ones, but if <laughs> you're, you never give your opponents the opportunity to play the bigger ones because he's going to be dead before that, then yeah. it was it, they played it a payoff big time. So. Yeah, JJ now in a very desperate situation. Reckoned Crusher will be enabled already for 14 health of JJ. And uh, yeah, this looks very bleak. For so him. how do you how do you do it? Because I kind of want to kill the frodding, so I guess I attack with the weapon, then I attack with one of the free freeze, another free can go for phase. Or is he just alright, he's just going all in, that's fine. He's seen execute. 
Um, there is some merit to playing Guardian and Twilight uh, dra uh, Dragon, Fairy Dragon as well, because then Frodding is stopped by the Dragon and you have enough damage to basically... There is no there is no yeah. armor up for JJ, he is Fire Blast. So if you are able to just attack with the weapon and those two free freeze to the face... It's over. It. Yeah. it's over. And... And I don't see JJ, I don't see JJ actually drawing into anything of significance. The Curator might be the only out here. Um, if you get the Ghoul, you can probably... What's no, you're still dead. Yeah, I mean, you need, you, need, you need to protect your health from those minions somehow. And with the Curator, he can do that. Um, okay, now not anymore since Tansif got chose to... Oh, actually, I didn't even realize he could still attack with the weapon. I thought he just was thinking about insurance. No, he yeah. could attack, no, but definitely. that's it. Stan Sivka yeah. goes to the grand final, defeats JJ, eliminates JJ from what the tournament. What a quick series that was. <laughs> yeah, that was super fast. That was super fast. And uh, yeah, this means that Stan, Stan Sivka is going to play versus Tessin in the grand final. But if he wants to win the whole tournament, he'll have to win versus Tessin two times, two best of fives. Oh yeah, definitely. It's going to be a tough task. And if I remember correctly, um, they, these two players faced off against, against each other as well. Did they? I think like Tess, I only like Lothar. Do you remember? Did they play together? I mean, Tessin uh, faced yeah, in a group phase. Let, let's 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 recap right there, right now. Tessin in the group phase. He was in your group phase. Faced Super JJ first. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he faced RTU. Oh yeah, they played season. together. Tessin won three one versus Nasivka yesterday. That was the last match of yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So they. It's actually he a recent beat, match. He beat Xixo afterwards. He beat uh, Stan Sivka, yeah. then he beat Super JJ again. Yes. yes. He that's, beat everyone that he was facing, actually. That's in one <laughs> versus incredible. everyone who he was playing against. Yeah, uh, that will be an incredible final, especially since uh, Tessin is kind of newer to the scene, right? We have seen him in the previous PG PGL Tavern Tales. But first of all, let's let's see the best plays of the match, guys. You can go through it all again. Oh man, those best plays were so good. So basically, on turn six, uh, Malkazar's Imp and Doomguard, we've seen it a couple of times, and uh, we see how strong this combo is. Most of the time, before we didn't have Malkazar's Imp, before Karazhan, Doomguard was being played only when there are no cards in hand, or you had to discard two, which was really bad, and then start f um, fervently life tapping to get those cards back. Here, you don't only get a 5 7, you also get two cards from your deck. Yeah, the story, the story there was basically that Sansifkat never really got the card roll he needed to uh, get back on the board. But uh, yeah, <laughs> here, right here we see Sansifka uh, getting right back on track with the Dragon Warrior beating JJ's Zoo. Onyxia is still good versus Zoo, as we can see, a very good dragon, uh, especially now also with, without Ritual. Um, here, Dragon Warrior versus Rogue, uh, a tough matchup. Today I think we've mostly seen Dragon Warrior winning versus Rogue, just going for phase, but they still <laughs> laugh at that 2-6 being played and forced because JJ's situation was so bad. I need to ask Stan about it. Why did he play? He, was he really thinking about double fun of knives on that on that board? Yeah, when you're in such a favorable position, you might as well play around the only really small niche thing that can screw you over. And in that case, true, the Twilight Guardian without the buff uh, and also disabling the Alexstrasza champion in your hand is the correct play, as weird as it seems. <laughs> yeah. So here, winning versus that um, Rogue, and the last game was Warrior versus Warrior, but uh, Stan absolutely commanding position from the very beginning, getting that champion and fire war axe, and then just uh, double executing the, the minions, the small minions in the very beginning to get that early advantage, tempo advantage, and uh, giving JJ absolutely no chance to come back. The final game was actually like dismantling the opposing warrior, right? The, as you said, the execute are buying the the really important tempo to get the damage done uh, during the early turns and just stack it and that's it. That's how you finish up the game because Dragon War is a deck that has a problem to be um, to make a comeback into the game, right? Um, this is the that, that was the loser's racket final and now we'll be uh, preparing for the grand final, Tessin versus Stan Sivka. Uh, so we'll jump to a short break, but after that break, um, the players will be doing the bands, uh, during which we'll have a small presentation of the virtual reality, again, as yesterday, but probably with a different ga game, I hope. So don't go anywhere, guys. We're going to a break, and then grand final of PGL Tavern Tales 2016 in Dreamhand at Dreamhand Bucharest. <laughs> 